come over on this back side, you've got this piece of meat, kind of like we call it the brisket point. First thing we're going to do is trim that off as close to the bone as we can without actually gouging any of the actual rib bones themselves. So we'll come in there, get as close as we can, <clears throat> trim that off. So once we get that trimmed off, nice and flat. No meat on that back side. Next step we want to do is we'll flip them over. And when you're selecting your ribs, you want to try to get ribs that have real straight bones. So if you go to real what? Real straight bones. If you're actually going, the ribs are real curved or bent, that ain't really what we're looking for when we turn in ribs <coughs> on the competition side. So you can see these are relatively straight. But our next cut's going to be to make these a St. Louis cut. So we go to that first bone right there where it sticks out. And that's where we're going to make our cut and cut all the way across to make our St. Louis cut. So that big bone's right here. We'll go into it and go all the way down. Right there, still good meat. You can put it on the smoker and eat it. We typically just chunk it. <laughs> Could you put that in my box? <laughs> well, absolutely. I don't know if I'm going to eat it out of that yeah. tree. Why did you throw that away? <laughs> the next step I do, if you look on this one end, you got a good bit of fat right there. We usually don't. I usually don't turn in them two or three ribs, but I typically trim that off anyway. So I trim that off as close to the meat as I can. trimming this up, you don't want to get too close to the bones. <coughs> that will reduce what they call the shiner. <coughs> as far as presentation wise, it just don't look good. And then once we've got that fat trimmed off that corner, we flip it back around. Usually on these, I'm, I'm only going to cut them to about an 8 to 10 rib right. So on this far end back here where it starts to get real thin, we'll actually come in there and just cut it off. Trash that as well. <laughs> so right now as we're looking, once I do that, get it down to about, like I said, eight, ten rib bones. <coughs> I'll put mine back and, and squeeze it like that. Any excess fat I have, I trim it off. And that's just going to give me more of a uniform rib so that when I'm cooking, it's going to cook more evenly. And just presentation wise, it looks a lot better. So once I get that, then our next step, which I think the ribs are probably about the fastest to prep, our next step is going to be to pull this membrane off. That membrane is real chewy. I, I do not like eating ribs at restaurants for the most part because they will not remove that membrane. I won't eat them. They're chewy. I don't like it. So, first thing we do is to remove that rib bank, that membrane, because you find underneath one of your bones right here, you slide the knife slightly under it. Press up just to get that membrane lifted. <coughs> we have a paper towel we use with what we do. Some guys use uh, catfish skinners. I've seen in competitions. I've never personally used them. And as you see, <coughs> that membrane pulls completely off. And the reason the restaurant doesn't do it takes too much time? They're lazy. They're lazy. <coughs> they don't want to. Well, it takes too much time. I mean, they're in the food business, and uh, they're not going to pay attention to detail, typically like we would for competition purposes. And once we've got that membrane off the back, that's what it should look like. So that right there, typically, is going to be a good looking <coughs> set of St. Louis ribs. At this point, we layer our flavors on our ribs just like we do on brisket, just like we do on pork. I typically like to do a sweet rub <coughs> initially on the ribs. Sweet rub on top, also on top. <coughs> As a, we usually cook them 275, 250 degrees, about two hours. What we're looking for is a good, good looking bark. Once we get that good looking bark on there, that's when we want to take our next step <coughs> and wrap them. Wrap them in tinfoil. Uh, once we wrap them in tinfoil, what's that? Got a question? 250, 275. Typically in comps, I cook 300 on my ribs, but I typically do a little faster. 
just for time restraints. But uh, <coughs> yeah, 250, 275, <coughs> hour and a half, two hours. Go for color. Once you get your color look, also take uh, you can take a toothpick and that toothpick enters that meat real good and clean. Then it's time to wrap. Wrap them in tin foil. We butter. I usually do butter, parquet butter, squeeze butter, and brown sugar. Wrap them in tin foil. Then you're gonna cook them usually for about another hour in that tin foil. Pull them out, and you will see that bone start to pull away from that meat. That's when you're good in time. Once you see that, you unwrap them, put it back on the grill. Yep, just like that. Once you see that, you pull them out of tin foil, put them back on your smoker. At that point, I flip mine bone side up. I start putting a hotter up, kind of like the smoking gun sweet hot. Put that on there and start to glaze. Then I flip it over. After about 15 minutes of doing that side, do the same thing on the top side. Do all. Do that smoking gun's hot, put a little glazing salt. Our favorite friend. So you found some. Found some. <coughs> and uh, we got sweet heat. That's the, yeah. But once we glaze them, and like I said, we, what we're looking for is to, to uh, label them with sweet, then hot, and then the glaze. So we glaze them for like I said, 15 minutes. Right before we get ready to turn them in, we'll do another quick dusting with this hot salt, hot rub. So that the judge, when he takes a bite, he gets sweet. And on the back of his tongue, he gets that heat. And that's that flavor profile we're looking for. So. At, at, at a restaurant, at a restaurant, excuse the expression, how long have they cooked those ribs? How do they keep them coming all night? Well, they're going to throw them in the smoker, typically. And they're going to, it, it varies. Uh, they're going to cook them to death. They're going to cook them where they fall off the bone. Because typically with ribs, that's what people want. They won't fall off the bone ribs. In competition, we actually have to have a bite through rib. So when they take a bite of that rib and pull, they're going to have teeth marks. So if that bone falls out, it's considered to be overcooked. So we've got to make sure we hit that degree. And that's usually two to five degrees between getting it just right and overcooked. It's typically what we're looking against. So but once we get them sauced, I'm going to read you. I kind of lost a couple things right there. Uh-huh. Uh, you initially, you initially, you with what? Initially, rub them with, uh, like a sweet rub, like this uh, Wicked Cube. he got a really good sweet rub. Uh, original barbecue blend. I think uh, Greg's got, I don't know how much more he got back there. That's usually a good one to start with. Do a sweet rub to begin with. And then, like I said, smoke it for an hour and a half, two hours. Once you get the color the way you want, and it's too thick and tender, that's when you want to wrap in tinfoil, parquet butter, good. and brown sugar. Not real butter. Not real butter. We, well, it's just parquet butter. It's just, you know, it's just a squeezable margin. It's, it's, more, just, convenient. it's more convenient. Okay. And it tends to melt a little quicker and a little better. Uh, once we sugar them, butter them, we wrap them, another hour, hour or so. Like I said, once you start to see that pull them away from the bone like you want, that's when we pull them off and we'll start glazing. And then right there at the end, we add that second rub, glazing, with your sauce. And typically, uh, I think Brad's got some smoking coals. This Uncle Kenny's, I think, is a real good sweet barbecue sauce. Any particular sweet barbecue sauce you like. Uh, You're going to be getting smoking coals here soon, aren't you? Yeah. Next week? He's going to be getting smoking coals, and I know Brad's a big fan of that. I've heard a lot of good things about it, so. That's a good one to use. And like I said, this Uncle Kenny is also a good sweetener to use. A lot of these sauces and these spices, as a matter of fact, all the ones you've been referring to, are actually made by other competition teams. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we got Kenny's, is we met them at the Van Jones last Memorial Day. Uh, Wicked Q is Jeff Campbell out of Watkinsville. He was here this last week for our competition, and he's, he's a very successful team uh, in this region, I think nationwide. But um, a lot of these teams perfect their flavor and then we'll take it more and offer it. Well, I'm just going to get one on. I'll cut a wrap. I'm going to build a box down. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, after we glaze, then we'll come back right there at the end and use something like the smoking gun top of Just give it a little bite there at the final stage of it. And at the 
that's the height. Yes, that's the height. Usually I don't put as much hot as I do sweet. That's a rib. Typically you want it to be sweet. You don't want it to be too sweet. You also want to have just a little bit of heat in there as well. Yes. Uh, I know quite a few restaurants that use honey on their ribs. Uh, do you use, did you talk about honey? At times I will. You can use uh, a lot of things, use the, the butter, the sugar, and the honey. It just all depends. Depends on how sweet the sauce is and how sweet you like it. Uh, actually, in, in Augusta here, I did use honey because that honey gives a good looking mahogany finish when it's all said and done. So, yeah, I did, I did miss that, that step. Now, when you wrap these, you can do whatever flavor profile you want to to put it in there. You really need to add some fat when you wrap them, kind of keep them moist. Uh, I don't know if you want to use apple juice, apple cider vinegar, mixed, uh, butter, whatever. Yeah. Just just add something in there to give it something so it can sit in. Alright, now cutting these, I like to do what they call the Hollywood cut. Where it looks, you got a lot of meat on both sides of the bone. Everybody, I don't know how y'all guys do it pretty much. Uh, so what, what we do is we typically look at the rack, see which ones we like out of it. Typically, most of the ones I do is gonna be out of the middle. So I find the ones out of the middle I like. It's so hard to see where to cut. It's, yeah. It is hard to see where to cut. Especially when you got you know five minutes before you got to turn your box in and you're. That's why you want the straight rib. Yeah, that's why yeah. you want the straight rib. But that's on the selection of the, the, the actual rib itself. And I, I have seen t some teams do like what he did on the brisket. They'll take and they'll score their they'll score their ribs um, mm -hmm. in a little small place right in between the bones, um, so you can see mm -hmm. and kind of connect the dots with your knife and see where to cut at. Because once you put all the sauce and the rub on there, you can't. It's hard to tell without flipping it over. And, Flipping it over takes time and fingerprints. And in a restaurant, uh, one, many times the one side of the rib has got more meat than the other side. Of the, the, one side of the bone has more meat than the other side of the bone. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true right here. You, you'll get, like if you notice this one right here. <clears throat> this one is a little thin right here. And that's how most of them are. And they start getting thicker down in this area. <coughs> so when you get to this area, you want to cut this end off. And you really want to pull your bones from here for competition. Um, it helps us too because if sometimes depending on weather or humidity or whatever uh, if your thicker ribs are not quite done enough then we'll pull from here because we know these will be done. So our biggest thing with, with the judges and everything is picking a rib that will come off the bone easy but not all at one time. Just that single bite. So you may have to play around with two or three different style ribs. You may have to go through four or five racks of ribs to get enough for turn in. So they're that particular about this. And you, also you're competing in, anywhere against 25 to 95 teams. So everybody's got the same objective. Most teams do four, some do three. Uh, I just read on Facebook, some people are going to two racks. Uh, more power to them. Uh, I'm gonna cook between three or four. It's gonna be my minimum. And there again, it depends on the selection of ribs. If you got some really good meaty ribs, with straight bones, you get by with two or three. But there's no telling how many you have to weed through to get that. Uh, IBP is a pretty good uh, supplier of ribs. Smithfield is pick and choose, you know, they'll have a couple good ones and they'll have a bad one and that's pretty much the norm when you're picking up a three pack of ribs. And just varies in how meaty your rib is. You can't ask the pig how, how meaty your ribs are. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it depends on what they're feeding them that time of year, what, what time of year they kill the pigs and everything else. Um, you know, what's the difference between a spare rib and a baby back? Spare rib is what we had earlier, but we trimmed it down to a St. Louis cut. Um, spare rib has the meat up here and everything. The baby back is more 
up on the back of the rib, and it's a shorter curve. Okay. What is the St. Louis cut? St. Louis cut is, I have no idea why it's called a St. Louis cut, but that's whenever you take that, that's what he did at the very beginning. Whenever he took that, the knuckles off, off of here. Yeah. yeah. That's a St. Louis cut. I usually look for about third or fourth bone to be your longest bone. So usually that's that's as close down as you can get to the other end of the bones. Oh no, we won't have to have to cut through a bone. So the longer the bone, maybe the sweeter the meat. Well, really, truthfully, the thicker the thicker rib that you can get it may take a little longer to cook, but it's going to be better than a thinner one. You're going to get more meat. It's going to come off the bone a little bit better. And like he said, with backyard, uh, most people like to overcook them compared to you know competition which is fine. When they say fall off the bone, that's great. But in competition, it's not gonna score well. So, you know, you've got to have, and it's about a four or five minute window in there where you get that one bite and so it takes a lot of practice, a lot of money, and a lot of perseverance to get it down to where your timeline is. That's why some like to cook it hot and fast. They've got it down to, you know, minutes. People cook it low and slow, they've got a little bit longer lead way in there. So, but that's pretty much how the pretense of a competition box is. We try to do the Hollywood cuts where you got a bigger piece of meat on each side of the bone. Uh, you know, normally what we do is we'd probably glaze this back over before we stick them in the box, get that real nice sheen at the end. And then like he said, you'll, you'll dust them right at the end too. Uh, to get a little bit more of that rogue flavor on the outside. You can also take apple juice and spritz them with apple juice right there last minute and that'll kind of give it a sheen as well. So, dust them with the hot. Start with sweet, finish with the hot. It's just a very light dusting. It's not yeah, like it's not you're rubbing it again. It's very, very light. It's very light. And if you got a coffee grinder where you can get it almost like powder, they do make a, uh, a product called gunpowder that will actually melt into here a lot quicker than a rub. It will not taste any grain sauce. whatsoever. Yeah. So. so what's the best to get the so What? Well, it could be your actual glaze you use, your sauce. Uh, like, like I said, a lot of times I like to get mine with apple juice. Yeah. Spritz with apple juice. Yeah. Once we get that box yeah. built, it's not hidden. Close Probably. up. Probably. That just makes it look like it's real wet. It's seven and a half pounds. And in ribs, the more fat the taste here than Yeah, well, you don't want to look for ribs that are too lean because I mean, you got to have that fat in there to render out. That's where I mean, that's where your flavor's at. So, uh, I mean, if you got a, a rack of ribs and it's just straight lean meat, it's, it's going to be end up being a little tougher. So, typically, you do want some marbling up some fat throughout that rib itself. Brisket, you have less fat brisket. Well, you got a lot of fat in brisket too. It's just like I said, a lot of stuff. If it's a hard fat, you want to trim that fat off. If it's a real soft fat or something other, then you're fine. But if it's a hard fat, get rid of it. So. And how many competitions will we do in a year, and how far will you travel to do it? Well, we're going to do probably 25, 30 this year. Oh, so you're doing it for a living? Well, it's not my primary job. Okay. It's, 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 it's a secondary thing. It's a hobby to turn into a job. Um, we're looking at doing one right now in three weeks in Mississippi. Oh, so you're going to travel yeah, we're, we're basically all, the... Yeah.